Hello everyone. I hope all of you are having a great time. And even before starting today's session, I would like to urge you guys to go and see the other video that I published yesterday. It's about the journey from a tier three college to the product based company. Abhishek Jain, who belongs to the coding decoded community from approximately an year, has finally been successful in nailing the coding interviews. He moved from a tier three college to the product based company Morgan Stanley. and there is a lot of valuable advice that you will be missing if you don't see that video it will motivate you and inspire you to perform better in coding interviews now let's look at today's question it's longest turbulent subarray in this question we are given an array of integers and we need to return the maximum size of longest turbulent subarray that is present in the input matrix we need to return its size So without much ado, let's look at the presentation that I have created for this. I'll be explaining the solution as well as the question in the PPT itself. Longest turbulent subarray, lead code nine seventy eight. It's a medium level question on lead code, and I also feel the same. The approach that we will use to solve this question is similar to what we have done plenty of times in the past. So the main crux of the problem is is in understanding the question. So let's try and understand the question. The question says we are given an input array of type integer. If we plot all the points on a graph or paper, you will see something like this. Uh, let's assume this is a hypothetical array. You will see some valleys getting formed, some mountains getting formed. Valleys, mountains, valleys, mountains, valleys, mountains, and valleys, mountain, valleys, mountain, valleys, mountain. Again, something like this. Let's hypothetically assume that this is the graph that has been plotted using the input array and we need to tell that particular segment which is of maximum length containing valleys and mountains so you see a mountain here a valley at this index again a mountain here again a valley here again a mountain here again a valley here again a mountain here again nothing this is flat because this is not part of a valley so we have to abort this process the other segment is this one so you see here a mountain you see here a valley again a mountain again a valley mountain valley mountain and this is flat so this was a very simple case uh, you need to tell the length of that particular segment in this uh, in this array which is of maximum length which is formed by either a valley followed by a mountain now the question reduces to the identification if the this this particular segment or this particular index is turbulent in nature or not how can we identify that either it will be a valley or a mountain so how can we identify the valley segment let's assume this input index is k if the element across its neighbors on its left and right is higher than the element value at index k then it will form valley remember this point to its opposite if let's assume this is the element k if on its neighboring side the values are lower than the value held at the kth index then it will form a mountain i hope these two conditions are clear to you and once you know that any particular index falls in such category that means it is turbulent in nature as per the definition of turbulence either it should be a valley or a mountain if you have understood this statement then the question is clear to you so will be the solution so let's take the same example that was specified in the question and let's try to build our solution uh, here the input array is given to us as 9 42 10 7 8819 and i have plotted it on a, a sheet of graph what i'm going to do i'll have a helper method created in my system and i'll use a two pointer approach to come up with the solution the helper method will tell me if my current index in under consideration is a valley or a mountain if either of these two cases are true then it will return true otherwise it will return false pretty simple and straightforward so let's start the iteration at first we are given the start index at 0 and we can take the end index starting from s plus 1 this is my end index end starts from start plus 1 pretty straightforward we will check if my current end index is turbulent in nature or not how will we do that 
you will see if it is forming a valley or a mountain this particular index which is one is neither of them nor a mountain nor a valley so this is non turbulent in nature we have to abort this process and uh, what is the starting index the starting index is zero what is my end index end index is one so how much length have we calculated so far it is end minus start plus one so current length is equal to end is one minus zero plus one so the length becomes two so far we have calculated the answer one of the possible answer as to consider it as a default case because whenever you see a dip or a high a high up uphill going then the length would be two and that would be the bare minimum answer so let's initialize the answer variable with two and what we're going to do we will move ahead with the iteration considering the starting point as end so my start points to here since start is pointing at one where will be end point to end point to one index higher than start which is two so end points to this particular end index and let's see if end uh, is a valid valid candidate for turbulence if it is forming a valley or a hill kind of a structure let's go and check that you see two index has a value two and it is forming a valley that means it's a healthy case we have to move ahead in the iteration till the time we don't find an unhealthy case which is non turbulent in nature let's continue here what do you see we have the end index pointing to 10 and is 10 forming a valley or a mountain the answer is yes again it is forming a mountain structure so we are good let's continue next we have is 7 is it forming a valley or a mountain kind of structure let's check it is at fourth index again it is forming a valley kind of a structure it's a healthy case let's move ahead here what do you see uh, we have end pointing to this particular index the value is 8 and is it forming a valley or a mountain kind of structure no it's a abortion condition because it is not a mountain nor a valley so we have to stop here where is end pointing to which what is that index 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 end points to fifth index so we have to abort the process what is the length the length would be start minus end minus start plus 1 end minus start plus 1 end is pointing to 5 start is pointing to 1 and 5 minus 1 plus 1 the length would be 5 which is higher than the previous value that we calculated which contributed which was contributed by 9 and 4 so since it's higher value we'll update the answer to 5 and we will again restart the operation there is one particular case that we need to handle explicitly which is if you see your start and start plus one index to be equal you have to skip that value for start for example here a uh, start will be updated for the next iteration to happen and you see start and start plus one are equal so we'll simply move ahead you don't need to consider this case so let's move ahead in the iteration and start is pointing to this particular index the value is 8 here uh, since start is at this particular index where will end point to 1 higher than start end points to this particular index and we will check whether it's a turbulent index or not uh, let's go and see that it is turbulent in nature because it is forming a valley kind of a structure so we are good let's move ahead and continue the operation uh, this is the terminal index and we will uh, make it, a, it as a happy case we will consider it to be turbulent again and since now the length is exhausted we will break the process what is the length of this particular segment the length is 8 this is the 8th index this is the 6th index 8 minus 6 plus 1 as per end minus start plus 1 rule so the length becomes 3 3 is lower than 5 uh, the maximum length that we have calculated is 5. We use a two-pointer approach to find the solution and we have done this plenty of times in the past. So I hope the solution is clear to you and now let's move on to the coding section. If there, there is any doubt in your mind, don't worry, it will be crystal clear in the coding part. 
here i have checked if my length of the input array is less than 2 that means there is single index or zero length there's no element we simply return the answer as the length otherwise i go and initialize my max variable which stores my answer to 1 why 1 because there could be case where all elements are equal for example 5 5 5 5 there the length of the maximum turbulent size would be 1 therefore i have initialized it to 1 otherwise uh, if there there is any element which is different the length will become at minimum 2 which was a default case i have initialized three variables start end and length start is at 0 end is at 0 length is array dot length i go and check till the time my start plus 1 is less than length i see if my start happens to be equal to the next higher element in the input array start plus 1 i skip that index and increment my start variable otherwise i go and initialize start uh, end to start plus 1 as i presented in the presentation also we talked about this particular case when we saw witnessed 8 in the input array at the starting index i keep on incrementing my end pointer till the time my current index into consideration is turbulent in nature this is the helper method that i have created i'll talk about it it's a very simple method that checks whether the current index is turbulent in nature or not it checks against the valley condition and the uh, uh, mountain condition till the time we keep on finding mountains or uh, valleys we, inc we increment the end pointer in the end we calculate the current length which would be equal to n minus start plus one and for the next iteration to happen i have initialized my start to end once i'm done with the with all the loops uh, i return the maximum variable that i witnessed so far in the input array let's talk about this helper method uh, it accepts the input array and the index that we need to check against turbulence the first condition is of valley if my element at kth index is greater than its neighbors element at k minus 1 element at k plus 1 then i'll say it's it's a valley otherwise i check against the mountain if my element at kth index is lower than uh, element at k minus 1 index and uh, element at kth index is lower than element at k plus 1 index that means it form forms a mountain and this is just a very simple helper method the time complexity of this approach is order of n and we are not using any extra space or memory uh, so the space complexity is order of fun this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye